cringe. That's the word that multiple commissioners and presidents have used when describing Florida State and what they envision it would be like to have them as a member of their respective conference. Does that mean the Big Ten and the SEC doesn't want a brand like Florida State in their conference? Let's slow down a little bit. It's a little tricky, as we all know, with this legal stuff, but there's definitely a path for Florida State to join those respective conferences. But what could the potential domino effect look like, and what brands does the Big Ten and SEC actually have its sights set on? Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as it's the best way to help this channel grow as we are one of the most engaging Texas tech communities here on YouTube. Now we're transitioning a little bit. We're going to have a little bit more Big 12 content on here, at least one Big 12 video a week, whether that's regards to college basketball, college football, whether that's conference realignment, and so much more. Come join one of the most engaging Big 12 communities and Texas Tech communities here on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. All right, before we get started in this Pete Thamel article, which I found extremely interesting, and we'll have multiple bullet points from Pete, who is probably the best in the industry right now. If he's not the best in the industry, he's top two. Um, And he really laid out this Florida State situation in terms of the, the legality aspect of it and really where Florida State could potentially land and why Florida State may be not the brand that the SEC wants and maybe not the Big Ten wants in terms of if the ACC was to collapse. Now, before we do that, I want to hear from you guys in the sense of give me your one word to describe Florida State trying to lead the ACC. Are you just tired of this conference realignment stuff? Are you a college football purist when it comes down to rivalries and everything like that? Give me your one word to describe Florida State trying to leave the ACC. All right, let's jump into this because it's really interesting. And this Pete Thamel article came out just a couple of days before Christmas. You're listening to this uh, just a couple of days after Christmas. So there's been a little bit of news that has changed a little bit. But overall, this is kind of where we stand when it comes to Florida State. And it's a tricky situation for Florida State to get into the Big Ten or the SEC, according to Pete Thamel. Now, He laid out some bullet points. I'm going to read verbatim what Pete Thamel said. You can go read his article in more depth down below. It'll be in the description as well as the comments. But he says the Big Ten just jumped to 18 schools with the addition of Oregon and Washington at cut rates. That move is instructive in that they did not receive a pro rata share with the Big Ten, which is something in any potentially departing ACC school would face. So you could potentially get more money from the Big Ten that you were making in the ACC if you're Florida State, but it's definitely not guaranteed in that regard. Any move to the SEC would receive pushback from in-state rival Florida, not to mention Georgia and Auburn. You think about that kind of triangle that they create between Auburn, Alabama, Gainesville, Florida, and Athens, Georgia. Sure, kind of right in the middle of it is Tallahassee in some regards. How would those three schools come in and their school presidents and say, whoa, you're you're taking some of our territory in a way, right? How would that happen? Not to mention SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey has already come out and said, hey, we feel really good about where we're at when it comes to the 16 teams that we have currently in the SEC right now as they transition from being on CBS in the afternoon to now ESPN. Still going to be weird not hearing that uh, CBS intro with SEC football, uh, but I digress on that regard. Anyway, what would that do for Florida State? This doesn't even bring up the ESPN side of it. I obviously mentioned it from the SEC aspect of it, but the Florida State. How does ESPN look at this in terms of you got to remember the ACC has an ESPN contract. How would they view Florida State, ESPN that is, in the sense of them trying to get out of this contract? Would there be a relationship crack in the bridge per se? I think there potentially might. Now, Does that mean that they could land in the Big 12? No, I mean, maybe not. But I do think that overall, right, you look at this and it feels like Florida State has a better potential to land in the Big 10 than the SEC. Now, this is a Thamel quote that I find very interesting. He said, the part that few are saying out loud about Florida State is that it, along with Clemson, are likely not the most coveted ACC schools in the eyes of the Big 10 and the SEC. Both North Carolina and Virginia represent new markets and states for both leagues. They are also contingency states, which the SEC 
has always valued. It's a competitive battlefield that allows one league to expand north to new markets and another to potentially go south. I want to say this, and I want to be clear about it. Do I think Florida State ends up in the Big Ten or the SEC long term? Absolutely. I truly do. That said, it's tricky, obviously, from the legality standpoint of it. You know, you're going to court. Who knows how long that takes with the judicial system. But I also think it's tricky from the standpoint of the SEC in the sense that you have the ESPN factor of it. You have the schools already there in their backyard. Do they want another school like Florida State in their league? It almost feels like to me that the Big Ten is the only landing spot with the backup almost potentially being the Big 12. But you also have to wonder from the ESPN side of things with the Big 12. And also, if you're Florida State, was it worth it really making that jump to where you get, oh, I don't know, maybe five, six million more a year from the ACC to the Big 12, it almost feels like the Big 10 is their most likely landing spot. And how would that impact the SEC in terms of how would they feel about Florida State in the Big 10 now having a firm flag down there in Florida? It's something to think about, in my opinion. Um, who would follow Florida State? And if you haven't already, be sure to like the video here if you want more Big 12 uh, conference realignment stuff. And this does pertain to the Big 12 because the domino effect, right? If Florida State wins this, there will be a domino effect and schools will more than likely leave this conference. And maybe there's a merger between the ACC and Big 12. I don't know how I feel about that. But I do think that there are schools from the ACC that would inevitably end up in the Big 12, starting with the likes of Louisville, Pitt, Maybe you can get a Virginia, but according to Pete Thamel, that's a highly coveted brand from the Big Ten and the SEC. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and be sure to check out our memberships here on the channel as well. All right, let's uh, go into the part with who would follow Florida State. Remember, Florida State, North Carolina, and Clemson were all against conference expansion. Pete Thamel mentions that last year before SMU, Cal, and Stanford – all join the ACC, some at, you know, no rates if you're SMU and then smaller ones if you're Cal and Stanford. I mentioned it in a previous video here on the channel. I'll link that down below as well. It seems as though all the ACC schools are just waiting for Florida State. And what I mean by that is they're waiting patiently, getting their, you know, whatever it may be ready in terms of paperwork or their side of the story ready to go to court and fight this as well. If Because if Florida State wins, I've mentioned it and said it several times, domino effect, right? Now there are several schools ready to pounce if the Seminoles win their legal battle, but no one ACC school or schools is walking beside them in the process. That said, Florida State, Clemson, whoever left in the ACC go to the Big Ten or the SEC would likely take a reduced share. We mentioned that earlier. What does that look like? Is it more of what Oregon and Washington are getting in the sense of about 30 mil a year? Or do they get more? Because you got to remember right now, Florida State, they're getting 30 mil a year, basically, from the ACC. Is it really worth all of this and the potential of losing millions of dollars in the judicial system in terms of going in there and trying to make things happen and get a bigger payout? Is it worth it? I think long term, probably yes, from a security standpoint. But you got to think about that. Now, the overall aspect of this, and we're about nine minutes in, I appreciate each and every one of you if you haven't answered the pinned comment down below. Give me your one word to describe Florida State trying to leave the ACC. Let's get into the Big 12 aspect of this. I've said domino effect. We can go past that. I've mentioned that schools like Louisville and Pitt make the most sense for the Big 12, but after reading this Pete Thamel article, maybe there is a shot that schools that you didn't think the Big 12 had a shot at, actually they do, right? The Miamis of the world, the Clemsons, potentially the Florida States. That said, there's a long way in this, right? There's a long way in terms of this actually going to the finish line and crossing the finish line from the, you know, judicial aspect of it. Really, Florida State making sure that they can leave the ACC. There's a lot to this in terms of the potential collapse of the ACC. And I hope y'all are digging the walking pad in the back. Got it for Christmas. Shout out to the in-laws. Anyway. The schools that I think are most likely after reading this article are the two that I mentioned quite a bit in this video, Louisville and Pitt. And then I think Vatek and NC State. That said, you know Brett Yormark and crew are doing their due diligence at the Big 12 offices in Irving, Texas, 
ready to make a play in terms of increasing the Big 12 footprint east and solidifying themselves as a nationwide conference. And what I mean by that is this. You think about where the Big 12 is located right now, and you got West Virginia, you got Cincinnati, you got UCF, but you don't got anything down there in the south outside of UCF. You can change that relatively quickly if you are the Big 12, if indeed the ACC does collapse. On the ACC collapsing front, this from Pete Thamel. Before we go, one last thing from him. Any notion of an immediate demise of the ACC would be exaggerated, but it's clearly the league's biggest football brands, um, or it's clear that the league's biggest football brands and the biggest overall brands in the ACC lack faith in the league having the financial fundamentals to be um, in the football championship long term. This sounds really familiar to what the Pac-12 said last year and some of the schools, what they said in terms of when the Pac-12 was on shaky footing and we know how that ended up. Do I think that it's going to happen as quick with the ACC as what happened with the Pac-12? No, they have a media rights deal. The Pac-12 did not, and that's because of Brett Yormark going in there, cutting the line, and getting one for the Big 12 and securing the Big 12's firm footing in the college football landscape right now as the third best power five conference. We're really not power five anymore. I guess we're down to power four and could be down to power three. It's going to be interesting to see how this all goes about, but there is a lot to unpack here. Some of the major points are maybe Florida state, the Miami's and Clemson's of the world aren't the biggest sought after brands from the big 10 and the sec. According to Pete Thamel, that could be North Carolina and Virginia. Also, the domino effect. We've talked about that at nauseum here in this video. How does this impact the Big 12 long term in terms of increasing its footprint as a nationwide brand? I think it's interesting. And if there's one guy that I feel comfortable with in terms of him doing his due diligence and doing what's right for the Big 12 conference overall, it has to be Yarmark at this point because he really hasn't taken a bad step forward for the league. But I want to hear from you guys again. One word to describe Florida State trying to leave the ACC. And then before you get out of here, if you want more videos here on the channel regarding conference realignment and how it could impact the Big 12, all you got to do is simply like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join one of the most engaging Texas Tech and Big 12 communities here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel.